Hi, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and today in this lesson we're going to cover the topic of finding the common denominator between two or more fractions. Uh, and it's just a very important topic that you'll be using pretty much from here on out, no matter what math class you're in, you're always going to be dealing with fractions. And so at some point you're always going to be dealing with finding the common denominator. So in this section, that's all we're going to focus on, is we're going to take two fractions, maybe sometimes even three fractions, and we're going to practice finding the common denominator and transforming that fraction, but one or both of those fractions, into a form where both of them have the same bottom number. That's finding the common denominator. Now, the reason you do that is because in a few minutes when we get over into the next section and the one after that, when we begin to add and subtract fractions, I'll give you a little preview here. When you add or subtract fractions, the denominator of those two fractions must be the same. In other words, you must have a common denominator, which just means the bottom number has to be the same in those fractions before you even can add them or subtract them. So it's kind of like a first step you have to get and you have to master before you can ever, ever pretend to add fractions to get the right answer. So rather than combine this skill along with the adding fractions, I split it up. So in this section, we're going to practice finding the common denominator. And in the next section, uh, when we get over to addition, subtraction of fractions, we'll use the skill in order to be able to do that. So the first, first thing I want to do in this section is just remind you, what, is, what do I mean when I say find a common denominator? All I'm really saying is that, is that uh, you know, let's take a fraction that we understand, that we're really familiar with. Let's think about pizzas again. What if we have one half of a pizza? We've talked about this a lot. What does that fraction mean? It means if I take a pizza, which is right here in front of us, and I divide it into two pieces. That's what the bottom number means. So I'm going to cut it only into two pieces. But I don't have both pieces. I only have the top piece. So that means I have half of a pizza. And that's exactly what you would think about when you open a box and say, hey, give me half a pizza. That's what you would, you would do. You would cut it in half. You'd take half the thing. But if I also looked at you and I said, hey, uh, give me five-tenths of a pizza. You know, most people would be a little bit confused. Why would he want five-tenths of a pizza? What does that mean? But you would do it the same way. You would take the box, right? And you would probably cut it in half, right? And then you would cut it again in half. And then you would cut it again in half. And about this point, you would count. How many pieces do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I'm going to cut it in half again. It's going to give me eight pieces. That's seven, eight. And I'm going to cut it and half again, 9, 10. So these pieces are not equal because I'm not a great artist. But if you had a pizza slicer and you measured it out, if I cut it into 10 equal pieces, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I only have five of them. So I would take this piece. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these five pieces over here, I would actually take away. Now again, you got to pretend that these pieces are equal because I'm doing things freehand here, but in a fraction it's important that all the pieces that you divide up are exactly equal. But you can see in this case that neither person is the winner as far as who has more pizza because both of these people have exactly the same amount of pizza. This guy has this much pizza all together, and this guy has this much pizza all together. Both of them represent half of a pizza. It's just that this fraction looks a little bit different. But it's not a better fraction or a worse fraction. It is just a different way of writing exactly the same amount of pizza. So the way that we uh, you know, can go back and forth between these two fractions here is basically, you know, in other words, what I guess what I'm trying to say is these two fractions are exactly equivalent to one another. They represent exactly the same amount of pizza. And so if I were gave you the fraction 5 tenths, and I said, 